So, Nike say that their new national team kits here are the most technologically advanced football shirts out there and potentially also the best. And to figure out why that is, I've kind of invited myself to their world headquarters in Beaverton, across to Portland, to speak to Charlotte Harris from the Advanced Design team. Charlotte, thank you for having us. But I'll actually dive a little deeper as we also managed to get into the normally very closed off Nike Sports Research Lab. And I'll also hear insights from what it's like getting feedback from the pro players. But first, back to Charlotte, because there's not a lot of new stuff going on for, uh, for the EC24 shirts. Can you take me through real quick what those innovations are. When we first took the leap into our advanced knit technology back in EC16, uh -huh. this was very much a graphic uh, application of our data mapping, sure. but it wasn't necessarily one for one with what the athlete uh, needs. We actually moved to EC20, where we're able to start introducing some of our computational design and understand how we can actually build in data into our uh, materials for the athletes. And, and computational design, that's a, that's a cool buzzword. What does it actually mean? What do you do with it? So what it means is that we're able to take the actual data of the athlete, the motion capture, and understand the sweat, the wicking, the stretch, compression, and build that into the material itself. Right, so there's an algorithm that takes all of that data yes. and, and gives you like a pattern, a knit yes. pattern, okay. But uh, where does all that data come from? Well, Nike have one of the most advanced sports research labs in the world right in their headquarters. So I went to take a peek behind the curtains to see how they gather some of that data. Right, so uh, this is probably the most intimidating room I've ever been in in my life. Not that it's scary in any way, but you know, there's so many cameras around me just looking at me and my pretty naked body with a beautiful blue cap on. Uh, what this essentially does is that it scans every single inch centimeter of my body to kind of figure out how I am built. And then they, uh, Nike can go in and take a look at, okay, how do footballers look? Are they broader across the shoulders? Not in my case, but for most footballers, uh, where, where are they wider? I know we have wider thighs and all that stuff, but how does a footballer need to have his or her shirt tailored to basically be able to flex well, to fit well, and all that stuff. And that's just not sitting down and drawing a nice shirt. Apparently, you need like, I don't know how many cameras, 60, 70 cameras in here, to figure all that out. It's, it's high tech. Okay, so one thing is knowing what the average athlete body looks like, but then you also have to consider the materials, the garments you're working with, and whatever those garments do to your body, how they help your body when you actually start to go and perform. And that is what Nike can also test here in the, probably one of the most scientific, you know, sci-fi things I've ever seen in my life. So they have climate chambers here that they can basically take from minus 20 to plus 50 degrees Celsius. They can adjust the humidity and a lot of other things. Now one of the first chambers in here, they have copper sweating thermal mannequins. Try saying that four times quickly in a row, it's, it's hard. But what we can basically get in here is for Nike not just to go in and test like individual little pieces of garments, but actually have the entire pieces, like the, the actual pieces, the shirts, the, the pants, the shorts, whatever, and just put them to the test on mannequins that are shaped like humans, that move like humans, and, and get this, and their mannequins, they sweat like humans too. So they can actually just go in and stress test to see how, uh, how the mannequins react instead of having to, you know, have someone like me going like this for 24 hours. That's not very good. But super, super, super high tech, and as you can see. And they're doing a cold test right now, so let's just close these doors up. What they're doing in the other room, Rio right here, they named after the Olympics. Sweating, obviously, for athletes, for footballers, it's a very important thing. The reason sweating is important is that it cools you down, but only if sweat, that's what they told me, can evaporate from your body. And that's, that's the important thing, because if the sweat just drops off, it doesn't cool your body down. It's the evaporation part that's really important. So what they can measure in here is that you can go on the bike and you can really go at it. When you start to sweat, they can actually measure how much of your sweat evaporates and how much drops off. And the way they do that, come in, come in, join me. Is that basically, you can see there's a lot of, there's not water in that uh, container. That's actually a mineral liquid that is able to trap the sweat drops that will fall down 
And then there's a weight underneath, a very fine tuned weight, that can then go in and measure how much sweat has dropped into the container itself. And then by measuring you before and after you've done the exercise, measuring the garment before and after the exercise, and measuring how much sweat is down there, they can actually see how effectively your body is being cooled down. I, I mean, they, they just told me, I'm not sure I really get it, but whoever thought of this, I mean, whew. And then there is uh, the final chamber, which is uh, one for me, which is great, um, because I'm gonna go in there. Right now it's 35 degrees Celsius and very humid in the 60s, I think. Uh, and I'm gonna go and run there for uh, 10 minutes, which is gonna suck, but I'm gonna be very hot and very sweaty. Once I come out, they're basically gonna take me into another room, take uh, a photo of me in the shirt, then take a photo of me without the shirt to see you know, all my thermals, and then take a photo of the shirt. And then they're basically gonna take all that data to see how the shirt has helped me and my sweat evaporate, and uh, basically see how effective it is where my sweaty areas are, where I breathe and all that stuff. It's, yeah, it's high science and it sounds like really, you know, up there, but it seems to make some sort of sense. And I'm just, uh, <laughs> I'm really impressed with this. It's, it's, it's fun to see. Okay, so we know that Nike now have a lot of data. But uh, how does that translate into the new shirts? So this is really designed with that athlete in motion 360. We went back to understanding what the core values of what dry fit was as a technology, which is a fabric that makes you able to breathe. But then when we look at the elements of sport, we understand that you need to be able to move. Right. So it's that balance of breathability and mobility coming together. You mentioned to me before shooting here that the ribs are basically there to help uh, uh, sweat wicking, moisture wicking. Yes. And that the mesh is there for breathability. Yeah. So the ribs have two, two jobs. They are there for enhanced stretch uh -huh. and, and movement of the body and also that extra bit of um, fabric can help transport that sweat and anti-cling uh, where you need it off the body. So you really have that element of breathability coming through the center of that chest and then that sweat being moved away. So you mentioned cling, right? I can't help but think back to some of the, you know, we've had some pretty grim examples of shirts being really wet and really clingy in uh, in the 23-24 season. How did you ensure to, to not do that? And also, how important is the right balance between moisture wicking and, and breathability? Yeah, I think that balance is really what solves that issue. Yeah. There are no other brands out there that are really looking at the material design in the same way that we are. Right. So you do see it a lot in some of our competitors yeah. where um, the material is very flat, sticking to the body, uh, wetting out. You just don't see that with ours because we have advanced yarn technology and advanced engineering technology and we're looking at the data of the athlete as well. Uh, so is, is that something you, you, you design for as well to avoid that yes. cling? Yes. So basically when, when you're running, right, there's, there's some, some, some drag from the air. Yep pulls the shirt onto the body, yep. and the, the clingier it is, the, the more, the more it will stick. wet plastic bag-like look. Correct, so we understand when we try and push things to a limit, that actually maybe we need to go back and add a little more weight in certain areas for it to perform even better. It's Wait, not, more weight? It's not always about it being the lightest kit out there, it's about that balance of having the right structures. So Ellery and Juan, now you have this chassis, this, this template of the shirt, but I guess it's pretty important to also get the feedback from the players, right? What are they saying when you bring the shirts to them? Out of the mass of all the jerseys that show up throughout one or two football seasons, we just really want to make sure that you recognize ours. Mm. Because when you recognize ours, you know that there's innovation in it, you know that there's fun in it, it's great to look at. But again, same thing, you know that we have listened to the athlete and also to the consumer. So do you think that it's basically like, you know, out of all the major car brands out there, you know, when you look at a specific chassis, mm -hmm. you, you instantly recognize, okay, that is that type of uh, brand. Is that the same for you guys? When you, when you look at a Dry Fit ADV shirt, you can just tell, that's Nike. That's what we try to, no? That's also like goal. That's our ultimate goal for us. But it's like uh, we type in before, I think uh, I remember some insights from Asisa Shola. She said to us, like, uh, you guys not competing, you set the standards. And that's how, how we just sit with it, we just take all these different things. How, how do you find the balance between speaking to the emotions with the design, the, the, you know, the design language of the, the cuts of the shirts, the fits of the shirts, and the actual tech? If you look at the jerseys that we've had in the past, 
We've had a couple of jerseys that were lighter. Yeah. And so the automatic assumption is that it will make you faster. Yeah. But we hear more and more from athletes that they really care about how something feels. And so if it feels too light, sometimes they can have the perception of like, is this still a quality jersey? So one final question. Have you ever been to players where you've realized after the feedback that ah, we, we pushed it too far? But I don't see it as a mistake. I really see it as a learning and how we can, you know, listen to them better and fulfill the needs better. One of the things that I liked about our innovation on 2012 was laser cut ventilation. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a very intuitive element that showed consumers and athletes that this jersey was very breathable. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to turn it up a notch and uh, can't fully give the technology away, but we tried to make sure that there were elements in a jersey that would make the garment stand off from the body so that an athlete would actually feel the airflow. Oh. Those elements were elements that an athlete indicated to us that they would feel and that it was very uncomfortable. Okay. So we knew we pushed it one step too yeah, far. Yeah. Um, and that helped us to realize like how important that element of sensation is and it directed us to where we are today. Yeah. If you are conservative, you just play in the middle, you keep doing the same, you think you're gonna be like behind really fast. And uh, you can say what you want, but one thing that these shirts aren't is behind. Now, I personally love seeing just how much science and technology goes into these things, but at the end of the day, the most important thing is that the shirts just feel good. And guys, if you want to try the new Easy24 shirts for yourselves, try all this awesome new technology that Charlotte and the team has worked so hard on, you can go and buy that uh, from the link to Unisport right over there. Of course, also don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more cool innovation videos like these. And, uh, you know, let me know what you think in the comment section right down below. And if you want to keep watching, there's a wicked playlist with cool football skills that you can learn right down there. With those words, we'll be signing off. Cheerio.